Watam is odd. It's bright and stupid, an eclectic mashup of props and weird animations and really catchy little tunes you can join hands and dance in circles to. And it starts in the aftermath of the world ending. A solitary figure, the mayor, sits distraught, alone on a featureless plateau lit only by starlight. No companionship, no vision of something better. It's from this impossibly bleak introduction that the first seeds of hope spring eternal. A small smile on the back of an unassuming pebble. A friend at last. And then another. And then another. Until you routinely find yourself meeting wayward visitors from all reaches of the universe. While hidden at first, the ultimate goal of Watam is to rebuild your world. Bring your companions back through the power of friendship, through cooperation, through uniting disparate parts. It's like Death Stranding, basically. And you are taken through this series of colourful escapades in order to do so, meeting new and strange characters, and expanding your world until you have entire biomes linked up hand in hand. Through this, you find out more about the circumstances that led to the world ending, mythologizing the arbiter of your calamity as this overwhelming threat. But it's okay, because in spite of the crisis that unfolded, there is still hope. Regaining your memory of what happened, reuniting the multitude of strange buggers who make up your family, you can make this place home again. As the game reaches its apex, with arms linked across all four seasons, you are just one friend short of a perfect circle. And then the moon shows up. An instigator of violence and harm so severe it killed the world. A being of malice, contempt, ugly jealous thoughts and a lust for power, reduced to a bawling mess stood before you small, humble, begging for forgiveness. The game asks you to make a choice, and this is the hardest choice I've ever had to make. Four options, increasing in wordage, rising in complexity, and all essentially culminating in the same sentiment. You hurt us. What you did was monstrous, but if we are ever going to move past this, we all need to move forward together and we need your help. What makes these options interesting is that they embrace something I've always loved about the way the illusion of choice is handled in games that do it well. If all roads inevitably lead to the same destination, the smart pursuit is to make choice a matter of introspection, not a trigger for change. Have it reflect something about you, the player, personally. And forgiveness is a very personal thing. In fact, it's often the most difficult thing in the world. It's an act of kindness bestowed unto people who more often than not don't deserve it. Most people won't even recognize what they did was wrong. And if remorse is felt, if the perpetrator of such great harm is willing to make amends, that doesn't necessitate the need to show even an ounce of generosity to them. No one is owed clemency, even if they show a genuine drive for penitence. It's not clear cut. You will have your own thoughts about this, you might not even agree with it at all. You might find that the whole notion of redemption being a necessary component of healing deeply offensive. Whatever choice made, you were asked if you are sure. This additional prompt struck me as very odd. Giving levity to the choice, making sure you are completely happy with your response before moving forward. And the game does move on regardless. All four options lead to the same outcome. You accept the moon's apology. The moon accepts your call to arms. Linking one more pair of hands, the circle is complete. The dance begins, and Mother Terror is born anew. A happy ending. The happiest of endings, even. Yet, these four prompts still lingered in the back of my mind even as the credits rolled. Did I make the right choice? Was there a right choice? In demanding some form of forgiveness for an agent of malevolence who genuinely shows remorse for their actions, Keita Takahashi makes a clear statement about his own beliefs. No good can come from holding on to grudges. 
Nothing can truly grow with water born of a poisoned chalice. And that's a surprisingly deep thought to come from a game that looks like this. La 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 la